autopilots have been used in planes for more than a century. But many people are fearful of autonomous systems driving our cars. So what are some of their similarities and differences? Autopilots are designed to help with some of the more routine tasks on both planes and driverless cars. Each system needs to be fed with a constant stream of data from an array of sensors. For aircraft, this will include data from other airplane systems and equipment like altimeters, airspeed indicators, accelerometers, and gyroscopes. Some of these sensors and systems are also present on a driverless car, albeit not quite as many. And let's not forget that there are also other specialist sensors and instruments on each mode of transport. In both systems, data is collected and processed in a central processing unit to help guide and control the plane or car in real time by precisely adjusting their speed, direction, and orientation. Aircraft autopilots work in part by using negative feedback. So, for example, the pilot will set the autopilot to keep the wings level. The autopilot will then monitor things like wing gyroscope data to detect if they dip. It will then send signals to the aileron servos to correct the error. When the wings are level once again, the autopilot will remove the command, returning the ailerons to their resting position. But in cars like this Tesla, the autopilots are actually advanced driver assistance systems. They use AI and a variety of sensors to see and sense the environment around the car. The algorithms then decide what to do in a given situation, allowing the car to assist with steering, acceleration, and braking automatically. Yet another important similarity is the fact that both types of autonomous control systems are not completely autonomous. Pilots can't sit around playing cards or twiddling their thumbs when the autopilot is engaged, they are required to constantly monitor the situation and be ready to take over in case of an emergency. The same is true for most self-driving cars, where the driver is required to be behind the wheel and intervene when needed. So the autopilots appear to be very similar on the surface, but when we move further into the details about what each autopilot does, there are some very important differences. Aircraft autopilots are only really used when the plane is cruising at altitude. It is not used usually to taxi the aircraft, take off, descend, or land. While modern autopilot systems like the ones on a Boeing aircraft are able to perform some of these tasks, they are usually the exclusive job of the pilot. During the cruising phase of flight, the aircraft tends to stay relatively level and doesn't change direction much, if ever. From this point of view, the job of a plane's autopilot is relatively simple. Maintain altitude and fly straight. There is no need to turn corners, no traffic lights to deal with, and more importantly, no pedestrians to constantly watch out for. Car autonomous systems, on the other hand, are basically all about taxiing but doing it in a dynamic and constantly changing environment. While a car is less technically challenging to control, the environment it operates in is far more complex than in the air. It has to immediately apply the brakes if someone runs out in the road, while also watching its speed, staying in its lane, and looking out for traffic lights. This is difficult enough for us, and it's proving to be a very challenging task for engineers who are developing the autonomous systems. It's pretty amazing what what companies like Tesla have managed to achieve when you think about it. It's probably clear by now that both autopilots are about as different as driving a car or flying a plane. And that might be the reason for most people's fear of autonomous cars. What do you think?